Hello and welcome to Louise Singleton Creations. In today's video I'm going to be showing you how I made these simple yet elegant coasters. I hope it will offer inspiration to people of all experience levels but its main aim is to help beginners who may be daunted by more complex methods. If you like the look of the box in the picture and you'd like to find out how to get the downloadable print and cut template, stay tuned till the end and find out more. I'm going to start today's video with just a quick word about how to measure two part epoxy resin. Now, some people like to measure resin by volume and some people prefer to measure by weight. I like to use the weight option. However, you do need to check the side of your bottle to see what it recommends. Some resins are one to one uh, ratio just by volume and some are one to one by weight. Some resins give you the ratios for both options. The resin which I use is called Total Cast by Elichem and it's a one to one ratio resin but it's only one to one if you measure it by volume. But don't let that stop you because you can still measure by weight as long as it gives you a ratio for the weight. So if you look at the label for my resin under the weight option it's one part resin to 0 0.9 parts hardener. So in simple terms, that just means that your hardener needs to be 90% the weight of your resin. So if you had 100 grams of resin, you would need 90 grams of hardener. Or you can half that and do 50 grams of resin and 45 grams of hardener. And if you pour out your resin and it's not a round number, you've just got a random number, all you need to do is divide it by 100 to get 1% and then multiply it by 90 and that will give you the measurement for your hardener. I'm sorry if you already knew all that, I know you didn't come here for a maths lesson but <laughs> I know some people do get confused about it so I just wanted to try and clarify it a little bit. So let's get on with the video. Here you can see I'm mixing it super speedy. It's not really. I've sped it up because I didn't want you to sit there for two minutes watching me slowly mixing it up. And now I'm pouring it into three silicon jugs. I like using these because you can let the resin dry when you've finished with them and just peel it off and then you're not throwing away plastic cups. So one of my pots is going to have clear resin in and I wanted to give it a little bit of sparkle with some of this iridescent glitter which is from Resin Pro. In fact all the pigments I'm using today and some of the glitters are from Resin Pro and they have sent me some lovely things because they want me to do a review and that will be coming soon. These are some of the colours. The only problem is I can't tell you the names of them because they don't have names on the bottle. Uh, but other than that, they are really great pigments. They have a stopper on the end with a hole in which makes it like a salt shaker and you can just shake it out. And I really prefer that than having to use a lolly, lolly stick to scoop it. It makes it a lot easier. But if you want to scoop the colour out you can still take that little rubber top off and just scoop it like you would normally with your resin. It's good to have the option. I will put a link to the website in the description and also I have a discount code for these for anything you buy from Resin Pro. If you put in Louise 15 you will get 15% off. So that first colour you saw me do, I thought it was a kind of rose gold colour, but it's actually more like a pale bronze. I really like it, it's just, I would love to have the names on the bottles. Now I'm doing the white, it's like a pearl white, and I took the stopper off because I wanted a lot more in there, and so I just wanted to be able to scoop some out. So I'm just mixing in the pigments. 
I'm not really mixing that fast, I've just sped it up to make the video a little bit shorter. I just wanted you to have a look at the beautiful sheen you get from these lovely metallic pigments. I had a tiny bit of resin left in the pot and I'm just adding some of the Galaxy Glitter. It's white and it's so beautiful. It's got all different sizes in there and it's it gives you such a subtle effect. And that's from, as, as before, it's from Resin Pro. So I'm just adding that with the resin and you only need the tiniest bit of resin just to keep the glitter together. You don't need a lot at all. Right then, I've got my mould ready. I've actually got two moulds ready because I'm making five coasters today. And the reason I'm making five is the extra one is going to be used to make a coaster stand, which is in another video, which I will link to at the end. And you will get to see how to make the stand to go with these four coasters. I'm starting with the bronzy colour around the edge. And then I'm going to add the whites and then the clear and the thing with resin is it does all the work for you really you can just pour it in there and leave it and while you're away from it all different things start to happen and you never quite know what you're going to get so you don't need to do anything fancy to get beautiful coasters you can keep it very very simple and still end up with something really really beautiful I'm being very careful not to add too much. I'm using, as I said before, I'm using total cast resin and that's not heat resistant. So what I plan to do is do a second layer. When this is cured, I'm going to put a layer of heat resistant resin on the top. So I need to make sure it's not filled up and I, I do still have space for the resin on top. If you're using heat resistant resin, you don't need to worry about that. You can fill it up as much as you like. So now I'm getting the glitter that I mixed and I'm just going to put a spot in the middle of each quarter. Well, not in the middle, in the, in the point of each quarter and it will just spread itself out by itself. It doesn't really need me to do it for it. You just, you just plonk it in and it sorts itself out. That's the thing with glitter. It actually goes goes everywhere when, when you don't really want it to but <laughs> it it just went in the point and it's turned out fine and I'm just using the heat gun to pop any bubbles and I'm being careful not to heat up the silicon mold and I don't want to overheat the resin either because if you do either of those things you're going to end up with your coasters sticking to your mold and you could even damage your mold so be very careful with your heat gun mine's just a embossing gun and it's very gentle so it's quite safe really right so when i've got all the colors poured in i found that it was just lacking something i wanted to give it something extra so i decided to get some of the bronze pigment powder and mix that into the pale bronze that i had left from before i had a tiny bit left so i just added some of the bronze pigment powder to it for a darker edge and it just added a little bit extra contrast around the edge And now I'm adding a little bit more heat to pop any more bubbles that have popped up and also to move the colours around just a little bit. Now I wanted something extra in the centre. Uh, it wasn't planned but as I said before I noticed it just needed something extra so I found my Cosmic Shimmer uh, gilding flakes which are so pretty. There's all different shades in there and I mixed them around with a little bit of resin and really you might think when you see it coming out of the pot those flakes are huge it's going to be too big but when you mix it with the resin they break up and they go into really tiny pieces and it just looks really good and it's really it really gives a little bit of interest to the center of the coasters 
Now I'm just moving them around a little bit just to spread them out and all the time what I'm doing is checking that all four of the coasters are balanced and the, they match together because obviously these coasters can be arranged as a set on a table to make one big coaster and I quite like things to be as symmetrical as possible so I'm trying to make sure they match up nicely. And I'm just repeating that for the fifth one for the coaster stand so I've zapped through that really quickly so you don't, so you don't have to watch it all over again. Right then, so it's the next day and it's time to add my second layer of resin and this time I'm using a heat resistant resin and it's called Ultracast XT and it's from the same company as the one I used before but this one's the heat resistant one that you can place your hot coffee cups on so that's what I'm adding now and I'm being extra specially careful not to touch the edge of the silicon because I don't want any sharp edges on my coaster. I want to avoid any sanding if possible. So I'm just doing it really, really carefully and not going over the edges. Do be aware of the pot life of the resin which you're using. If you're taking a lot of time like I'm doing with mine, it can start to cure while you're using it and then you're at, at risk of getting uh, imperfections in the surface of your coasters and you really don't want that so you kind of need to pace yourself according to the pot life of your resin so yeah be as slow as you possibly can get away with because it is important not to go over those edges so I just repeated the process for the other three coasters and you don't need to see it all again so I'm just going to uh, fast forward through that onto the next stage. Now for this top layer I'm not going to use my heat gun because I didn't want to blow the resin around over the silicon so I just used my kitchen torch very very quickly so I didn't burn it or bend the mould and then picked out any little bits with a cocktail stick and if you've made resin coasters before or anything with resin you will know that you get these little bits of lint appearing from nowhere even after you've picked it all out and I've come to the conclusion that it the reason that happens is because it was already in the mould and it's floated up to the top rather than dropping in there. That's what I'm starting to think. Right, okay, so it's time for demoulding. It's always the most enjoyable part. Unfortunately, after all that care I took to not go over the edge, I did manage to get some um, going over one of the middle edges. I don't know if you saw it. Um, it's not the end of the world, but I didn't want it to happen. I will show you what I do about it when it does happen. So the first two came out beautifully and the last two were joined together where the resin had managed to go over the edge. So there you can see what happened. They were joined together. So what I do about that is I have a tool which I use and it's called a deburring tool this one here and it works really well if the resin is still a little bit soft uh, I use it quite a lot but this resin I'd left quite a long time because I was in the middle of another project and it had gone really hard so it didn't work as well as it normally does but it is a great little tool for getting rid of all the little edges that you find sticking up so I got rid of the worst of it with that and then I used sandpaper and a buffing tool which is just a nail buffer uh, for obviously for your nails. <laughs> I've made quite a lot of coaster sets now and they sell really well on my website but you know I still haven't perfected uh, the the art of getting each one to be perfect without having to do anything to it. I don't know about you, but every single set I do, there's an issue. There's something I need to sand or there's been a 
bit of lint or a fluff and Annie's doing extra coat. It can be a real pain in the neck and I'm, I just seem to be quite unlucky but you know there's there's always a way around these problems whether it be sandpaper or another coat on the top or a super duper air purifying system that gets rid of all the fluff. I don't know. I'll get there in the end. One of these days I'll get the perfect set that I can just say is finished as soon as it comes out the mould. So I'm just colouring in the edges with a bronze pen. It's a paper mania pen. Not my favourite of pens to be quite honest but it did the trick. And after I'd coloured the edges I used some polyurethane gloss varnish just to protect them because obviously that's not covered in resin and it, it's going to get wear and tear and you don't want that pen scraping off. So I'm just co covering it with some varnish and the top little edge that I did I'm carefully going over that as well and then it's all protected. And here we have them all finished standing proudly in their stand which I've made in the other video and you will see the link for that in a moment. You'll just have to click on the picture and you can go straight to that if you would like to know how I made the stand from the extra coaster which you saw me make. I'm really really happy with how these came out. I think they're really simple but there's something classy about them and I just think they're beautiful. As it's the end of the video, it seems quite fitting to be putting the coasters to bed. If you like the packaging that I've made for these coasters and you would like to support me on Patreon, I do give the, the template as a free PDF download to all my full member patrons. As always, thank you for watching and if it's your first time here and you haven't already done so, please click the like button and the subscribe button and then you'll get notifications every time I upload a new video. Bye for now.